Hello and uh, welcome YouTube. Today we are going to explore SQL Server Chain Data Capture or CDC. Our focus will be on how to use CDC feature with SQL Server Integration Services or SSIS to achieve incremental data load. If I have packed your interest, then let's begin. In most nightly batches in ETL, we want to ensure that we are only processing the most recent data. For instance, just the data since the last ETL data load. Obviously, we do not want to process every transaction from inception to date during each night. Sounds simple, but most source systems won't tell us which rows belong to the time window since the last ETL load. This problem space is typically called Change Data Capture, or CDC. The term refers to the fact that we want to capture just the change data from the source system within a specified window of time. What better way to determine what data has changed in the source system than let SQL Server just tell you? SQL Server Change Data Capture, or CDC feature, tracks which rows in the source have changed in a table or tables. This allows us to only read the rows that have changed in the source. SQL Server Change Data Capture SSIS controls streamline incremental data load with SSIS. CDC is easier to configure and it has minimal impact as it utilizes SQL Server logs. CDC SSIS controls only work with SQL Server, so if you're working with any other source system, then this feature will not work for you. CDC requires setup in the database and on the tables before we can use it with SSIS. In addition, you must have the ability to alter the source system to enable CDC. Let's dive into the demo. Open Management Studio and enable CDC on the database. I am going to enable CDC on Adventure Work database by executing the following code. Now we can check to see if CDC is enabled on this database. It's a bit indicator in the CDC enabled column. So one means uh, the CDC is enabled and zero means uh, the CDC is not enabled. Next, we can enable CDC functionality on the table of our choice. Run the following code. This will enable CDC on the employee table under human resources schema. It will take a couple of seconds as SQL Server is creating underlying objects along with enabling CDC on this table. Once this code completes, it will return the message that few CDC related jobs are created. We can expand jobs under SQL Server Agent and can view these two jobs. At this moment, we can also inspect the CDC related objects created by SQL Server, expand the database, and we can locate CDC schema under system tables. We can also view few tables necessary for CDC operation. Also, there is a capture instance table for employees table. This table will store all changes to the source table and will be used by SSIS for incremental load. Also, there is a new user under security for CDC. This user is the owner of CDC schema. And then now we can check if uh, the CDC is uh, enabled on our employee table by executing this code. This will give me the table name and whether the CDC is enabled on this table. I have also created a destination table. This is the replica of the employees table under the human resources schema. So this will serve as the, as the destination table. So once we have started making changes to the original table, then we'll go ahead and load data into this table. Currently, this is empty. 
we will need to create a CDC state stable. This will hold the CDC state, uh, whether it's an initial state or incremental state. So we'll need to create a table. And in this instance, I'm creating a table called CDC states, which is the default name that SQL Server uses. And we are also creating a non-clustered index on this table. And I'll go ahead and create uh, this table now by executing this code. So we have our table in this in place now. So now we can head over to our SSIS and do the initial load. This is our package for the initial data load. If we expand this, uh, we can see that we are using ADO.NET connection. Then we're marking this as the initial load. We'll need a variable to hold the state of the state of the CDC. And then you're storing the state in our AdventureWorks database. And uh, this is the state stable we have created earlier. And here we are saving the state CDC state name into this CDC states table. And then we have a simple data flow. So we are going to our source employee table, pulling the data, and then we are loading it into our uh, the CDC destination table. Once this process completes, we bring another CDC control after data flow. And this time around, we are marking the end of the initial data load. We save the CDC state in the same variable. We also save the CDC state to our states table. So let's go ahead and execute this. And uh, we'll see that we have uh, loaded 291 rows from the source to the destination table and uh, everything executed successfully. So we have loaded our initial data. Now I will head back to Management Studio and make a couple of changes to our source table. In this instance, I am going to update the hire date for a couple of employees here. So let me give you a demo that uh, these are the rows I am going to change. So these are the three initial rows with the business entity ID of one, two, and three. So I'm going to execute this script and update the hire date for these employees. And now we are also going to insert a single row into this table with the help of this script here. Let's go ahead and execute and uh, we have inserted a row here. Source table should have 292 rows now since uh, we have added one row. So let's go ahead and execute a simple select against our source table. So as we can see, we have 292 rows. And at the very bottom, we should see our newly inserted row here. In this demo, we are only going to uh, explore the net changes option. This allows us to retrieve the final image of a row, even if it was updated multiple times in the source. So if we go over to our database and expand programmability, and under table value functions, we have a system generated function for net changes. This function will give us net changes for employees table. The CDC function takes three parameters from LSN and to LSN and row filter option. The CDC function understand only LSNs. Therefore, we need to map the date time values to the LSN numbers, being careful to check the minimum and maximum extents. Uh, we then call a wrapper function for the table, which returns the rows that have changed. Here we are mapping the date time values to the LSN number, and we are carefully checking the minimum and maximum uh, extents. And then we are validating the from LSN uh, using the, our capture instance table. If all values are correct, and uh, then we call our net changes uh, function. And uh, if the values are correct, then this function should give us the rows that have changed recently since the last update. So as you can see that uh, it has captured uh, the three rows that I've updated, one, two, and three. And this is where we have updated our uh, employee's hire date. 
and the last row which is the business ID of 293 and this is where we have inserted a single row into a table so this is what uh, the CDC control and uh, in SSIS do uh, they map the LSN and uh, they capture the CDC state and uh, by doing all of that uh, they call I suppose they call on this function uh, to get the net changes uh, from the CDC table. Now let's head back to our SSIS package and see how SSIS uses CDC to do incremental load. I have a second package that handles incremental load. Let me give you an overview of this package. It starts with truncating the staging table. Then we have a CDC control task. It uses the ADO.NET connection, and this time around, under Operations, we select guest, we select Get Processing Range. We save the CDC state to the CDC state table with the help of CDC state variable. Data flow of incremental package includes CDC source. It connects to the employee source table, and we have to specify the capture instance of this table. Under processing mode, we select net. We want to get the latest image of the row, regardless of how many times it was updated since the last ETL load. If you have a requirement to bring in all the changes, then you can select all options. We save the CDC state to the variable. The CDC splitter plugs into the source. This splits the inserts and updates into different pipelines. From the splitter, the insert goes straight to the destination table. However, I am loading the updates to a staging table. I can bring in an OLADB command and load updates to the destination, but OLADB command process one row at a time so it can become a performance bottleneck. Therefore, I am loading the rows to a staging table, then I execute a SQL command to update the destination from the staging table. Upon data flow completion, we have our last CDC control task component. We mark the currently loaded rows as processed. We save the current state of the CDC to the CDC state table, and this marks the end of our incremental load package. I am going to switch over to Dataflow and execute the package. Our package executed successfully and it only processed four rows, three updates and one insert. We can confirm this by executing a select against our destination table. It should have 292 rows. We should see three updates where we have updated the employee's hire date and one insert in the destination table. We can also see all the changes that have been made to the source table by querying the capture instance table. We have two copies of the updates, one prior to the change and one after the change. And in addition, inserted row with the ID of 293 is also logged in the capture instance. We have demonstrated how to enable CDC in SQL Server and how we use CDC controls to do an incremental load with SSIS. So that's it, folks. Thank you for your time.